we're ready. all ready. We're headed to Vegas Woo! for the E3 conference. Recap. It's going to be a pretty eventful four days, five days for us. No pun intended? Yes. Yes. <laughs> for the first time ever in my life, a pun was actually not intended. Yes. Anyhow, so... It's going to be busy. It's going to be awesome to see everyone. Yeah. And I don't think that Vegas is... We're not going to see anything or do anything there. We're going to be super focused it's all about, inside. It's all about the people, and we're live streaming it too, which is cool. But anyhow, what I'm really excited about for this episode is to maybe share some highlights uh -huh. of getting there and some different things. But then also, uh, Tammy and Eric from Techno RV are coming out. Well, Todd Henson also from the National Training RV Training Academy. But uh, Eric had a blowout on his Class A. And I want to sit down with him. He learned a lot from it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's the TPMS guy. Experiences usually do that. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, so we're going to sit down and we're going to share that because he has some very specific things to do that I think would help all the motorized, the seasons about motorized. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to have that interview. So there's going to be that going on. We're going to talk to Eric. We're going to provide that information. And then, my gosh, we're getting close to getting out of here. We're pretty excited to hit the road. Yes. So that's coming real soon. Real soon. becoming our obligatory Trader Joe's stop. Always. Love our Trader Joe's stop. And okay. who's that? We got some salads. Oh, she said, are you guys from that RV show? She said, I'm RVing because of you. Oh, <laughs> that's great. I was chilling here. I think the thing I love the most about KYD and now E3 camping events is all of the duallys and jeeps at the <laughs> events. get back to normal life you put it back on the shelf and you distance yourself from it yeah. and you don't take action but when you start asking yourself what can you do now with what you have with where you are that's where the rubber meets the road a neutral is the return path for electricity electricity comes in with your hotline good morning Everything that I've been trained to do, every event that I've been through, as well as in Iraq or Afghanistan, I'm going through the scenarios in my head, so if it happens when we get out that gate, I'm not surprised. That's most times when people fail and they lose the initiative, is what it's called. It's when they're not ready because they either haven't experienced it before or they haven't trained to experience it. You always fall back to your highest level of training. Let's talk about some RVers. I know there's a lot of RVers in the crowd, right? All right, so. Well, one thing I love about the camping uh, community is that we kind of tend to work together. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> All right, well, hey, I appreciate you coming out to the E3 conference. You did great. It was a great conference, by the way, right? Yeah, and it was yeah. a lot of fun, and you were out there talking about propane, electrical, all that stuff. And then cool. I got to learn a lot from other people, yeah, which it was, made it great. It was a lot of fun, and but one of the things I've been excited to talk to you about ever since you texted me and said, hey, I got a, I've got a tire story I need to tell you, and then we talked on the phone about it. I said, this is something I want to record, and because you came out to the E3 conference, I thought, why not leverage three cameras and cranes and a Let's stage and by the way we're not <laughs> we're not actually in yosemite valley it might look like that but we're not <laughs> okay so um so you had a blowout i did on your phaeton yes. class a phaeton right and so what i wanted to do is go through because this season with kyd is all about motorized rving yeah i wanted to go i've heard about front tire blowouts that they could be it's intense it's intense yes and so I, i'd love to chat a little bit more about the story what you learned from it i'm sure there were some takeaways from it right Absolutely. and then you know what can people do to avoid that from happening when it happens what to do about it and then of course how to prevent it that's a pretty good yeah good idea right yeah absolutely so maybe just start with the overview of the of the situation so i'm in a uh, 41 foot uh class a mm -hmm. diesel pusher towing a jeep mm -hmm. it's uh it's me and tammy 
Uh, I had that morning, I had done a, uh, a tire inspection, probably better than I normally do because I had to change out a sensor on one of my wow. tire pressure yeah, monitoring sure. sensors. Yeah. So while I was doing that, I probably did a better inspection of the tires than I normally do. Anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're kind of the TPMS guy, right? So it, you know... <laughs> Exactly. You know a thing or two about tire maintenance. Yeah, so I know that you know I need, my pressures need to be good mm -hmm. and all that. So that morning, everything's good. Uh, we get on the road. Uh, it's a four-lane road. I'm doing about 65 miles an hour, mm -hmm. and uh, and just out of nowhere, it's a shotgun. It's a shotgun yeah. shot, yeah. right? Yeah. It's, and so it's my passenger front tire, and the the side force when when that happens is incredible. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and it's especially on a steer tire, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so what happens is you've got this momentum going this way, mm -hmm. and when the blowout happens, you immediately get this side force, right? So, you know, I've done a lot of tire seminars and, and, and learned from some of the greatest minds as it mm -hmm. relates to all this. And, and going through that, I've taken, I've watched these videos about what to do in this, mm -hmm. but I, I never knew if it would, like it's instinct. Yeah, what's it really yeah, like? You don't have though, a plan right? at that yeah. point, right? Mm -hmm. The attack is immediate. Now I've heard it's hard to keep it straight, is it? It is hard to keep straight, right? So the, the, the secret to it, and I've watched the videos on what to do, but I was like, does this really work, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so what you're supposed to do is right when you have the blowout, there's a side force. You've got to get that momentum going back forward, gotcha. right? Mm -hmm. If you hit the brake, you're just going to make it worse, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so the way you get that momentum going back forward is you accelerate, yeah. but you're really not looking to like gain speed necessarily. No. You're just looking to get that side force. When you say force. accelerate, you mean pedal to the metal? Pedal to the metal. So, you know, I've heard this before and you've heard this even more because you're a class A owner. Is that, is that counterintuitive in the moment? Is it counterintuitive? I mean, in the moment, it's crazy land, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you don't know what's going on. Liter literally when it happens, first of all, Tammy yells, we're going to heaven. I don't even know what she's doing. I, I hear her go, ah, we're going to heaven. I'm like, what is going on here? You know, I'm trying to focus over here. And so I ran it through. And it's good to know what Tammy does under pressure though, right? I mean, you know, that, that's how she's going to respond. Right. I mean, I'm like, I, I had some entertainment okay. while this was going on. Yeah. So what happened that helped me a little bit is, is and I, I thought about this afterwards, you had the cruise control on. Really? Well, you know what happens when, it, in this, my class A, if I start going up a hill and lose speed, it floors it. So obviously when I blew that tire, my feet were like about right here. I remember my foot going to the pedal, but I was like, I don't really remember doing anything. And I remembered I was on cruise control. Yeah, which it is instant. It immediately floored it, right? Really? So I'm in it, right? Because it's mm -hmm. a fight, right? I mean, it's wanting to go that way. It's, it's the pedals mm -hmm. floored. So I'm fighting it, and then I go and tap the brake. Well, my exhaust brake's on, right? Which actually helped me too, because so now the downshifting starts, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So I had the acceleration, that got my momentum going forward. Now I tap my brake, so the accelerator's off, and now I'm just trying to slow up mm -hmm. in a controlled manner with the downshifting helping gotcha. that. Now, well, let me ask one question. When that blowout occurred, first occurred, the big bang, the, you know, we're going to heaven. Yes. If you were in the, because you were in the outside lane, right? I was in the right-hand lane. The right-hand lane, yeah, 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 okay. Do you think if you were in the left lane and a car was directly beside you at that moment that you could have prevented it from going into that car? It'd have been tough. It'd have been tough. Because, I mean, imagine it, 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 it lunged to the right. It, but did it lunge a foot, two feet, three feet? I mean, right when it happened, like, I was in the right-hand lane and I didn't run off the road and I suspect I had two feet there. So, okay. And I was going straight. Okay, all right. So, so depending on where that car was. Now, personally, when I'm towing, I don't, I don't, I'm never beside someone. I just make a point of that. Yeah. You, you, you're in the right lane unless you're passing someone. Right. But then when I'm, I just like to stagger a little bit. I don't ever want to be beside someone. And I guess in a class A, maybe that's even more of the practice. It is. And, and you know, you, you get into certain cities and, you, you know, maybe you, you don't have a choice in that. Yeah. But in this case, yeah, sure, there, sure. it was pretty dead yeah. on the highway that okay, day. Okay. All right, anyway, so you, you, you use the engine braking to get you down and you slow down. And, and so then my next move was I, I just felt like I wanted to get off. But mm -hmm. there, there, was, uh, there was, you know, the, the white line and then it was just dirt. There was mm -hmm. no, like, lane to get off on. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I got to get off the road. And so when I started getting off the road, 
when that blown out tire hit off road, it was just dirt and it was soft dirt. Mm -hmm. I probably, in hindsight, should have just stayed on the concrete mm -hmm. because when it hit that dirt, sad force again, really? right? Oh yeah, yeah, and it was it was just buried up to the axle in the dirt, mm -hmm. and there's a ditch right there, yeah, right. And and so now I'm like, well, I'm keeping the left tire on the road, sure, and and I'm fighting it, I'm mm -hmm. fighting it. And if anybody's ever gone through this, like it's no joke, mm -hmm. you're fighting it, right? And then whenever I got down to a reasonable speed to where I felt like I could just kind of dive it off. That's whenever I went ahead and got off. And literally, I, 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 it looked like I perfectly parallel parked on the side <laughs> of the road. I mean, we got pictures of it, and it's just yeah. like, man, how did I end up like this? Because, you know, a lot of cases, you know, you see people, they have these blowouts, and you know, you're running into oh, guardrails. Yeah, yeah, and well, they're 45 and, degree angles, and they're all over the place, or, yeah. or go down on the shoulder. I feel fortunate to yeah. have my instincts kick in in that case, mm -hmm. but, um, and, and that's really why I want to share the story uh, to as many people as I can, because it's like, if I wouldn't have heard that from somebody else and watched the video of that kind of thing, maybe my instincts wouldn't have taken over. So I think it's important that people know, hey, if this happens, you give it the gas yeah. and, and not for long. Yeah. I mean, it's just a few seconds in my case, but mm -hmm. then it, you're still using instinct on that too. But it's only to get that side force going forward, forward again. And then you, you can- Regain control so that then you could stop with a little bit more control. Yes. And I would say, not to bring this back to Tobol RVs, but I would say the equivalent of a front tire blowout on a motorized RV, the equivalent to a towable is trailer sway. And I do the same thing with people. You gotta immediately reach down and, and you gotta have a brake controller for yeah. one, but then you gotta immediately depress that brake to get that thing. I call it like like a whip, like, hey, hey, yeah. get back in action, or yeah. get back in, get back right. in straight, right? Yeah. But some people don't know that and the, and the sway gets worse and worse and they do the wrong thing. They they hit the brakes and that doesn't change the momentum of the truck and trailer right. and it gets worse. So same thing. Yeah. Okay. So now you're on the side of the road and you've got this blowout. You didn't go to heaven. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what Tammy was thinking there. I mean, we're, we're, we're on the side of the road and, and, and right when we pulled over again, Tammy, right? She's the first thing she does is she's like high five and she high fives nice. me literally nice. in an instant. She, she's like, that was incredible. Yes. She was like, you know, she felt like we were going to flip mm -hmm. and maybe like there was a ditch there. But anyway, to your point, we're on the side of the road now. And, um, and I, I do have a membership with CoachNet. And mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of different memberships you can get. And that's the one I've had over the years, never had to use it. Mm -hmm. They were great, but they are, uh, you know, sort of at the mercy yeah. of whoever the local Sure, people yeah. are, and, and they took about six hours to get there. Okay. Well, you know you're in a motorized RV, so you know what you start cooking now, getting back to work. Pretty you're... much, <laughs> you know what I mean. That's what we did. We're like, well, we're in an RV, so yeah, yeah. We, we ended up uh, uh, having a meal. Few people pulled over, had a police officer pull over to check on us, and uh, and yeah, yeah, we just hung out. So when they get there, uh, I, I'm feeling like the guy's not going to have the right stuff, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And even though it's CoachNet, right? Yeah. It's, that's for RVs. But I told them, I'm like, you know I'm in an RV, right? Yeah. So they send somebody out. It, now it's dark and it's raining, right? Oh, that's perfect condition. Yeah. <laughs> well, it makes the story better, too. So, yeah. You know. Yeah. So I've, I've got my raincoat on, my little spotlight on. and mm -hmm. So the guy gets there. I said, hey, is that going to be a problem? And he's like, yeah. Yeah. He said, I ain't going to be able to do that. <laughs> oh, jeez. And I said, well, let me tell you something. I said, I've been sitting here for six hours. <clears throat> I said, we about to figure this out. I said, because you, you brought the tire, right? And he yep. said, I've got the tire. I said, well, you ain't leaving until we change it. Yeah. So I said, look, I've got hydraulic jacks. Mm -hmm. I said, I can use those to get the front up, mm -hmm. right? Even though we everybody knows that's yeah. not what they're not intended for. Not what they're for. intended, but I think in a, in, in a situation where you are, it's controlled, that'll work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. And by um, the way, the... Um, the bomber in the conference is now exiting out of the back of the room. So if you can hear that, that's what this is. It's this monstrous machine that flies over the top of... It's uh, incredible. Yeah. yeah. But I'd say we keep going because it's a cool machine. Maybe we'll overlay what exactly this, this thing does so people can see yeah, it. Yeah, it could be cool. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, so anyway, I, I, I raised the, the jacks up. Mm -hmm. and, and the guy says, that's not high enough. And I said, well... I said, if we can't raise the RV any higher, we got to make the ground lower. Yeah. I said, so we dig. <laughs> yeah. And so I started digging. I didn't have a shovel, so I had yeah. like this this pole type thing that I was. Uh, so I just started digging mm -hmm. and got to a point to where he was like, okay, I think we can do it. He takes the tire off. Now I know that tire's shredded, right? Yeah. 
Uh, so I know that the new tire, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to keep digging, right? Yeah, so yeah, so yeah, I just yeah. kept digging and kept digging and kept. And digging. What, what what state is this? We were in Mississippi. You can dig in Mississippi. Yeah, <laughs> and it was and it was soft dirt. And it was raining, right? It was I, I'd say in the, in the in the west, you might have needed to go up, not down. I, I didn't think about that. No, this <laughs> yeah. yeah, this was all yeah. soft soft sure, dirt. That's good. And so we were able to to blast through that, you know, get the get the new tire on, mm -hmm. and and we were on our way. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So I mean, it was from from the time it happened to the time we got back on the road. Yeah, I mean, it was probably seven seven and a half hours. Wow. wow. Uh, All right. Well, let's um, let's now that we know kind of what happened and everything. What are some steps that, that that Class A motorized RVers can do to prevent this? And what do you think caused it? Well, so I've ha I've had some people inspect the tire because I wanted I wanted to know. Sure. You know what I mean? It's like because I knew there was no visible signs. I knew my pressure was right. I had no temperature issues. And uh, the suspicion at this point is that there was an impact break, mm -hmm. which means that you're going down the road. Maybe you hit a pothole. Mm -hmm. That can cause some internal yeah. damage that you mm -hmm. can't see tires are not self-healing, mm -mm. those things can start to compound on themselves. Kind of like an internal bulge of air in a way, really. It, almost like a like a cyst inside the tire is really what that is. Isn't yeah, it? And, and then they, they can just get worse. Yeah, they get worse. And then if you have some separation on the That's inside right. of your tire, mm -hmm. then air can start getting behind mm -hmm. that, and then you know you start having issues. I think that that's probably what it was. It was just a catastrophic tire failure. But I, I did. I really wanted to point out, especially for uh, for your viewers, just from a knowledge standpoint, that this is rare. Mm -hmm. Like like the blowout with no reason. Mm -hmm. That's rare. Typically, blowouts are preceded by low pressure and high temperature, mm -hmm. right? Which creates heat. Which creates heat. And and so what'll happen is you know you get a nail in your tire. You don't know it. Your pressure starts to go down. Mm -hmm. Heat rises. The reason that heat rises is because if you're running at proper pressure, let's say your tire footprint is, is maybe that big. Mm -hmm. So whenever you start running underinflated, your footprint gets bigger, mm -hmm. right? It's like pushing a marshmallow mm -hmm. down, right? Mm -hmm. So your footprint gets bigger. That's more resistance on the road. And resistance as it sags on the, on the edges, right? And then you've got sidewall issues at this point, yeah. right? Yeah. Temperature goes up. Compounds in a tire can start breaking down around 200 degrees, maybe a little bit north of 200 degrees. Mm -hmm. Once those compounds start breaking down, you're going. That's when the blowout happens, gotcha. right? So, yeah. so if you could be warned of that, which I run a tire pressure monitoring system, I know you do too. Mm -hmm. So those are the two leading indicators of a blowout. Yeah, if it's low pressure, high temperature. So. A lot of times, somebody has a, a nail in a tire, they can be alarmed of that. They get off the road, they can correct the issue. Before it blow, before, blows. Before it blows. Mm -hmm. In my case, you know, it, it was a, a catastrophic tire failure is what they call it. And I do believe that it was due to a impact brake that I had picked up somewhere along the way. Yeah. Probably some bad potholes and mm -hmm. you know, I've been to Alaska. And they, been to, there are potholes? Is our yeah. beers, are, are, there, are there bad roads somewhere? Yeah. I, well, go go, uh, go I ninety through Chicago, uh, I ten through <laughs> yeah. Louisiana. I mean, like, seventeen, I forty out of Flagstaff. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we could, that, that'd be for another hour pointing out all the potholes. Yeah. Um, let's talk real quick about uh, Class A tires and how how many how much how, when do they have to be replaced? How long can they go? Like, I mean, I've heard I've heard seven years, eight years, no more than ten. Here, here's the big debate, right? So, uh, you know, those, those tires are, are can go 300,000 miles, mm -hmm. right? Because they're big truck, they're truck tires, right? Mm -hmm. These big tires. So, but so the the truckers will wear them out, right? Because mm -hmm. they're running 150,000 miles a year. Yeah. RVers are running like you know what, 6,000 miles yeah. a year. Yeah. yeah. So, you definitely age them out before you wear them out, right? Mm -hmm. And so, the the thought has always been um, five to seven years. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, every tire person I talk to tends to agree on this. But then there's debate around that with people that are like, well, I've gotten 10 years, you know, since we had this blowout and we wrote some articles and stuff about it. People have been commenting in. I mean, I've had people that are like, I, you know, I change them out every, every three years, no matter what. Yeah. Well, you know, on a spectrum, on the continuum of, of tire safety, there are always those that want to make sure that if there was an impact break, that yeah. they're just going to replace them, and then there are those that are going to push the limit a little bit, right? Yeah. Um, but when it comes to those front tire, I mean, I, if anything, I'd be moving those. And I'm not making a recommendation here, but if sure. someone were to push the limits, I'd take those, those front tires and maybe move them to the inner duels or outer duels or something. There's got to be a better way than putting eight eight-year-old tires on the front of an RV. Yeah. So 
And that might have been out of school. I would comment, say, but. no, I don't, I don't think so. And it may, maybe not the inner duels. Like okay. if, maybe if you had a tag axle, mm. then 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 you could maybe move those to. Yeah, but to even the, that, I mean, a, a tire, a blowout causes so much damage. The damage it causes tends to be more than the tire itself, even with these big, you know. Yeah, and, and I and speaking of that, I did get lucky. So mm -hmm. there, there's not a whole lot under there in, in my tire well mm -hmm. that there's there was the gas hose where I fill up at and mm -hmm. it did knock that loose yeah. and it's my understanding that they build those to kind of break away in those situations mm -hmm. and so it broke away the like, like it was supposed to and I mm -hmm. was able to kind of get that back in place before we um, before we took off the there so I was I was I felt fortunate you mm -hmm. know in that but I would say that you know five years um, you should have a serious inspection mm -hmm. on your tires. Okay. Okay. If a tire professional gives you the go ahead, mm -hmm. then maybe you get another yeah. year out of it. After that year, another that tire professional needs to examine them again. Mm -hmm. And then at, at year seven, they would they would be gone. Now for me, I'm changing them out at five years. Yeah. I'm just saying if somebody's well, and you've also to, lived through this, right? Yeah. And you know what it's like. And and it really was my plan anyway, because mm -hmm. that's the other thing we haven't talked about is is how old we're were my, my tires. Mm -hmm. I had a date code of 2715 on it. So the 27th week of 2015, my five years was rolling into 2020. Mm -hmm. And we kind of, we got grounded a little bit with the whole COVID thing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, I don't want to change my tires if I'm just going to be sitting here. When we really get back on the road, I'll change them. My intent was to change them at five. Mm -hmm. But we took this one little trip, you know what I mean? And then and then that's when it happened. Mm -hmm. So, um, but that, that would be my recommendation it's also, if you read the manuals uh, straight from like Michelin, mm -hmm. they'll tell you, hey, at, at, at uh, five years, have them inspected once a year. Now they say you can go up to 10 years as long as you're doing that. I tend to think that's a little crazy mm -hmm. uh, because at that point, you're really just trying to save the money. Mm -hmm. And I prefer to put the safety aspect put above that, ahead. but yeah. I know that Think everybody's got different circumstances. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, potentially you can prolong it, but you got to understand there's a balance there between saving the dollars and increasing your yep. risk. Okay. So when the blowout happens, you got to be prepared to hold that steering wheel straight, accelerate immediately so you keep that forward momentum, then slowly and safely come to a stop. Use TPMS so that you can, you can catch it before it happens. Proper maintenance, so then when they get it to five years, you're doing inspections all the time. Yes. Uh, if they're going to be sitting, if your Class A is going to be sitting for a long time, I think those tires absolutely have to be covered up from the sun. But of course, you know, and even we heard here at the conference, we had tire experts coming up, yeah. right? That when those tires get moving again, they revulcanize. Yeah. And uh, and then that kind of gets those compounds going again. Mm -hmm. So uh, there really might not be a reason to cover up from the sun when you're on a trip because the tires are, you know, they're moving and, yeah. the, and the compounds are moving. But you put them on the side of the house. That's another story because sun can damage those tires real quick. It can. That's what causes the cracking in them. It starts drying, mm -hmm. drying them out. And if you see any cracking on a tire inspection, it's you, you know we take it to a tire professional yeah. at that point. So a few tips. You're right. Yeah. Uh, protect it from uh, UV. The other thing, if you're going to be parked for a long period of time, tires like to be rolled first of all. So mm -hmm. if you're putting your RV up for six months, mm -hmm. they really need to be exercised about mm -hmm. once a month. This is the, the compounds can start leaching out of the tires. Uh, you can develop flat spots, so I know that might be difficult for mm -hmm. some people, but if you can work it out, mm -hmm. try and go run it for a, a, an hour or two, you know, once a month, just to, just to get out there and just roll yep. them, you know what yep. I mean? And so, uh, also, if you're parking on uh, con uh, concrete asphalt for mm -hmm. long periods of time, it's good to put a barrier between your tire and that surface mm. that keeps the compounds from leaching what out. What kind of barrier? So well some people will use like placemats. Okay. Uh, just in, just a thin barrier. Some you know I, I use uh, I used to have these in our office we had one of those big mats that you wrote you know roll an office mm -hmm. chair on. Mm -hmm. I just cut that thing up. Gotcha. You know? Okay. So uh, again and then you know I wouldn't do this if you and if you're moving a lot well, it doesn't matter so much. It doesn't matter, but if you're leaving it sit for a long period of time on those type surfaces, put a barrier in between it. Sure, it'll help keep those compounds. Yeah. Especially from what these tires cost. Out. They're hundreds of dollars each. Yeah, you got it. You got to do yeah. something. Yeah. All right. Or, well, or more. I paid that. Yeah. I mean, that, the Michelin's are expensive. Yeah, that tire was was all in. It was like six hundred bucks. Yeah. Per. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I appreciate you coming on and, and, and fun, sharing right? that information. It is fun, and 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 I think as we learn from people that have different experiences, it yeah. just it, prevents other people from having to go through that and yeah. your wealth of knowledge. Yeah, well, so, 
I like sitting down and talking to you. Yeah, no, it's yeah, fun. It's, it's fun honor. to talk about yeah, this, and it's yeah. fun to do it with all the cameras and lights, too, yeah. because it's a lot less work for me. Absolutely. <laughs> right, Jeff? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Thank you. Good deal. All right. All right. So how was your interview with Eric? It was awesome. <laughs> He's so good. It was so serious. It was awesome. It was. It was. He's so good. He tells a good story, provides yeah. a lot of information, mm -hmm. and I hope that he shared information that you can use for your motorized RV and class A tires and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But it was also kind of like the, just the cherry on top to an awesome four day conference. Yes. Well, the whole conference is about learning. Yes. And so we did a little deep dive. Mm -hmm. It was great. It but, was really great. Okay. So um, let's see, we're going to be heading back to Flagstaff now and we've got to convert our cabin back into a vacation rental. <laughs> And we've got two days to we do say that. We that like it's no big deal. It's so much work. And then we've got to get the Airstream completely ready to go. And we've got to start heading out east and um, other stuff. We've been making some little tweaks to E3 Camping. So if you're interested, we'd love to have you over there at E3 Camping. Definitely when it comes to RV education, doing things safely, properly, having a community of support, things of this nature. I like check to out. call it my on tap education. It is on demand, right? Yeah. 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 You know. Uh, so check out E3Camping.com because there's lots to learn there. And also the partnerships, even that, that were established this weekend, but in general, the partnerships that we've created to help RVers save money mm -hmm. uh, is a big priority right now. So go check that out. And um, there's so much more to come this season. We have some surprises S Still big news to share with you. But uh, yeah, this season's gonna get, get going, so. I want to go home, but I don't want to get in the car. Oh, yeah. there's my boy! Here Hello, he is! Charlie. Hello! Oh, he's such a good boy! Yeah! Oh, good boy, Charlie! Good boy, Charlie! Good boy! Oh, we missed you! We miss you, Charlie. I miss you. Yes. All is right in the world now. Oh. Charlie's back. You ready to hit the road, Charlie? We're gonna go home. We're gonna get three days. We're gonna hit the road. Okay. Yeah, he's ready. He's ready. He's ready. 